it's Christy back with you on the Lawn Fawn YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the brand new Build a Barrel Apple Dies. I'm going to pull out some different colored card stocks to die cut my different elements from. I'm going to be using Barn Red, Cilantro, Speckled Eggshell, Craft, and Ground Coffee. So I'm going to die cut the apples out of the Barn Red. I'll do the stems of the apples out of the ground coffee, the leaves out of the cilantro, the barrel out of the craft, and then the framing out of the ground coffee as well. And then I'll also do some apples out of the speckled eggshell. So now that I have my little stems and leaves out, I'm going to attach those together. So I'm just using some liquid glue to lay down on the brown part of the leaf and then I will pick up the cilantro part of the leaf with my Studio Katia embellishment wand and just place those right over top of the stem so we have a nice green leaf on that brown stem. So I did a few of the larger ones and a few of the smaller ones. There's large and small of both the stems and the leaves. So I'm just making sure to match those up correctly. And then I want to add a little bit of color to these. So I'm going to grab some Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide ink and just add a little bit of color to the tip of each leaf so that it has a little bit of like a shadow on the edge. Um, not too much ink, just a little bit there, um, not pressing down very hard or putting too much ink on that ink blending tool, just adding enough color on there to still be able to see that cilantro cardstock, but just have a bit of extra definition on them. Next I die cut one of the meadow borders using more cilantro cardstock and I'm going to continue using that mowed lawn to add a bit of definition to the top edge. And I'm being really careful with those very skinny grasses and making sure to sweep up with my ink blending tool and not down toward me so that I don't bend those little fragile grasses, keep them nice and straight. So then I will set this panel aside and I also die cut a piece of noble fur cardstock using one of the simple stitch hillside borders and I'm going to darken that up using some rustic wilderness distress oxide ink. So I'm just going to bring that in from the top edge to give that a bit of extra definition as well. And then I'll set this piece aside and bring in all of my apples. So I wanted to add some Distress Ink to the apples as well. So I first started with the Mowed Lawn. It was a little bit too dark. It's fine, but I didn't want to add it to more of them. So I just picked a few little spots here and there. And then I'm going to lighten that up using some Twisted Citron. And because these are Distress Oxide inks, they're going to lay right over that colored cardstock. So it just gives me a little bit of like a green spot on those apples. And then I also wanted to bring in some softer pinks. So I'm going to use some Kitsch Flamingo and blend a little bit of that onto some of my apples as well. Some of them I'll do with um, both the green and the pink and some of them will just have the pink. I wanted them each to have their own unique look. And then I'm going to bring in some candied apple to kind of just blend it all together. So I'm going back to a red to just knock some of that green and pink back and make it just a little more subtle. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to grab the um, pieces of speckled eggshell cardstock and I'm going to glue those onto three of the larger apples. So I'm just choosing three of those at random and then gluing the smaller apple, which I die cut out of the speckled eggshell and just putting that right on top so that you get a little bit of that red border on the outside edges. Then I'll bring in the barrel and I'm going to use some Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide ink 
to add a little bit of shading to the craft section of that barrel. And then once I have that looking how I like it, I'm gonna grab the ground coffee piece and I'm going to glue that right over top. So I'm just adding some glue in thin beads and then I will line that up between the little um, die cut sections. You can kind of see that little stitching detail in between each section so it's really easy to figure out where it needs to go. I also needed a sky, so I'm taking a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and blending on some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink using the Cloudy Stencil. And I'm just making sure to change the orientation of that stencil each time so I get a new cloud formation. And I'm pressing down firmly as I leave the stencil and then letting up on the pressure as I go up the panel to give it that softer look. I'm going to do three rows of clouds and then I'll add a little extra color at the bottom just in case any of that shows. And then I'm going to grab both of my grass pieces and I'm going to do some gold splatter. So I'm bringing in my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors and I'm just going to mix that up with a thin paintbrush and then splatter that all over all three pieces of that background. Once I'm happy with how that's looking, I will set this panel aside to dry completely and I will go back to my apple die cuts. I want to add some details. Um, first, with one of these, I wanted to turn it into apple slices. So I'm just carefully cutting around the core as you would with an apple if you were going to eat it. So I'm gonna get two slices out of one of them. And then on the others, I'm going to take a Copic marker and I'm going to draw in some little seeds or you could use the seeds that came with the Reveal Wheel Apple add-on, but I don't have that die. So I'm just going to draw them in by hand using an E57 Copic marker. And for the rest of my apples, I'm just going to add the stems by opening up that little slot that the die cuts. And then I'm going to use a piece of post-it tape to hold that stem in place on the back so that everything is nicely connected. And I will do that for all of the apples. So I put the small stems in the smaller size apple and the larger stems in the larger size apple, but you could absolutely mix and match them. It doesn't have to be that way. So now I'm ready to start assembling and I've die cut the three background pieces with the outside in stitch rectangle stackables to give me that nice stitching detail on the outside edges and also just trim them down slightly so that I will have a border on my card. So I'm going to glue the noble fur piece flat to the cloudy backdrop and then I'm going to add some foam tape to the meadow border cilantro piece and I just put it at the bottom and then up the two sides because I needed to have room to tuck my apple barrel behind and I've added some foam tape to the back of that as well but before I peel that off and attach it I want to get my apples situated so I'm just going to take them and insert them where I think I want them to go and once I'm sure that that's how I want them to look I'll add a little bit of glue to adhere them to the barrel or to each other as I go up the stack and just fill that up as high as I think I want it to go and I can adjust that later on but I just want to kind of um, get a few in there at least to start so that I can figure out the rest of my scene. And I'm making sure to kind of give them a little twist to the left or the right to make them look, you know, so that like they've been just tumbled into the barrel. I don't want them all to be like standing completely straight up and down. I want them to be kind of just tilted a little bit to the left and the right. And I want to make that barrel look nice and full. So I'm just going to keep adding until I have a look that I like. And this last one I'm even going to add on its side so you just see a little bit of it popping up there to give it a more natural look in that barrel. So once I have everything how I think I want it, at least for now, I'm going to add some more foam tape to the back of the apples so that everything is popped up and really well supported. 
and then I can peel off those release papers and I'm going to tuck this whole barrel of apples down between those two grassy borders. Just making sure it's on there nice and straight. I also die cut a few extra leaves so I'm just going to tuck those in here and there wherever I think that they will fill in some of the spaces and just create a little bit more separation between the apples. I'm also going to take one and just put it on both the left and the right of the apple barrel um, behind the apples just flat to the card to make it look nice and full. Then I'm going to take my cut apple pieces and I'm going to place those down at the bottom of the scene. One of the seeds, I didn't like how it came out. They weren't very even. I should have drawn it in with a pencil first, but I couldn't find my pencil. So I just decided to freehand it and I just thought they turned out kind of uneven. So I'm not going to use that one. I'm just going to use the, the better of the two and then the two separate apple slices I will adhere as well down in the grass. And then I'll also add a couple of leaves coming up from behind that larger apple slice. Then I'm going to take some pattern paper from the Gotta Have Gingham Rainbow 6x6 pad. I'm going to flip through until I find this pink gingham and I'm going to trim that down with my paper trimmer to be just the size of the front of my card. I'm also going to stamp out my sentiment and I'm using the absolutely awesome stamp set and I'm stamping out my sentiment in two different rows with some jet black ink. I'm doing the have an in one line and then the absolutely awesome day in a second line and I'm stamping that down twice to make sure it is nice and bold and there you can see that's the stamp set that I used. Then I'm going to set that aside and do an insert for the inside of my card and I die cut that with the outside in stitch rectangle stackables as well and I'm stamping with the lobster ink and I did your apple absolutely awesome with the apple barrel on the inside. So I've added some foam tape to the back of those two sentiment strips which I've cut down with the smallest of the everyday sentiment banners and I'm going to add one to the top left of the card and then one to the bottom right of the card and once I have those lined up I will trim off any excess with my cutter B scissors and then I can start assembling everything. I'm going to take the insert and glue that to the inside of the card first. And that's going to give me a nice border of that barn red cardstock showing through on the outside edges. Just making sure that's lined up and then pressing that down to adhere it. And then I will cover the front of my card with the Gotta Have Gingham. And I had accidentally sprayed some white ink on that card base, but since I'm covering up with card, uh, the pattern paper, nobody will ever even know except you guys. And then I'll glue my focal panel right in the center of that and make sure that that is nice and secure. And then I decided that I wanted to add a couple more apples into this barrel. I just felt like it needed a bit more height. There was too much room at the top of the scene. But since I already had foam tape behind those apples, I did have to kind of trim them down a bit to squeeze them behind, but no big deal. So I'm going to add one more over on the right hand side and then another one in the center. And then I added one additional leaf as well to kind of fill in the space between that tallest apple and the top sentiment strip. And that is going to finish up this card. So I will lift that up so you can see all of the detail and catch that gold sparkle in the background. There's also another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. Thanks so much for spending your time with me today. Have a great one. Bye-bye.